Hi, I'm Chris Beers and I'm a park ranger at Biscayne National Park, which is the largest marine park in the National Park Service. Biscayne helps to protect a combination of rare, interdependent ecosystems, both marine, terrestrial, and amphibious. And each of those ecosystems is connected to the next, and connected to us as people. Biscayne helps to protect the largest unbroken chain of mangroves on the east coast of Florida, and that's what I'm surrounded by right now. Now mangrove is a word that basically defines a plant that's living in and around salt water, so they're not related, but the park does contain the red, black, and white mangroves. Now the red mangrove is perhaps the most easily identifiable, and the reason for that are those long, reddish prop roots that almost appear to walk out onto the water. And in addition to looking really, really cool, those roots serve several important functions for the tree, the organisms that live in this ecosystem and for us as people. Now people might be wondering, okay, why do these trees need so many legs to stand on? And the good way to think about why these mangroves might look the way they do is to think about uh, offensive for defensive uh, linemen in football. You know, the big fat guys. They stand at the line of scrimmage and they crash into each other. And the mangroves live at the line of scrimmage between the earth and the sea and there's constant crashing in the form of waves. So much like those football players, they have their hands and their feet low and close to the ground in order to protect them from getting tipped over as a wimpy land plan might. So these trees get to hang out and stick into the ground to protect themselves from the waves and from storm surge in the form of hurricanes. And that's really important for us here in Florida because this, these mangroves represent a barrier protecting us from that storm surge and protecting the shoreline from erosion. So that's cool, they protect people and property. They also help to protect lots and lots of organisms who hide inside of that intricate network of roots for protection from predators. So they can hide and they also get a food source in the form of these mangrove leaves. Mangrove leaves that fall off the tree, they land in the water so that your invertebrates, your baby fish, your snails, your lobsters, your shrimp, that too small to maybe even hunt, are able to eat this decomposing plant mat. Those uh, organisms are in turn eaten by bigger fish, which are eaten by bigger fish, which eventually get eaten by people. Florida's famous for its seafood, so when you look down at your next meal, you're actually looking at a bunch of mangrove leaves that have been hanging out in some fish for a while. So it helps to provide uh, habitat for fish, it protects us from pe uh, people and property, but also the fact that these mangrove leaves fall into the water is really important against eliminating carbon out of the atmosphere. Carbon gets sequestered in these leaves, they fall into the water, where then that carbon is transported across the food chain, thus helping to uh, take a lot of harmful CO2 out of the atmosphere and protecting us from climate change. Something that's also pretty interesting about these trees is how they get rid of their offspring or have their offspring stick with them. So trees have fruits, just uh, mangroves have fruits, just like lots of other trees do. Except what's interesting about the mangroves is those fruits actually start to sprout while they're on the tree. Kind of like if you've got an apple tree with apples, but there's a tree growing out of the apple. So this is a mangrove propagule, and they'll actually flower, they're a flowering plant, and they'll either land into the water where it can then be dispersed taking them far away and abroad or they have a pointy end that might just help it get stuck in the mud or it'll grow at its parents feet. So these trees help to protect us from storm surge, they protect lots of the organisms that live here, they help with uh, addressing some of the problems with climate change, but in addition to all of that they're really really cool. You can explore them walking along the shoreline at Biscayne National Park's Visitor, Visitor Center, or better yet, you can canoe amongst some of the myriad mangrove canals and channels that we have in the park. I encourage you to come out, learn as much as you can about mangroves, and get out and get connected to the ecosystems of Biscayne National Park.